And we're back. Welcome back to episode number two in the series on how to build QGIS on Linux. In the first episode, I showed you how to build QGIS in the command line and how to install all the dependencies that you need to get QGIS built. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to use Qt Creator to build QGIS in a, in a graphical um, development environment. Um, and we're going to show you a few configuration tweaks that you need to get 3D support built in QGIS as well under Ubuntu 20.04. Right, so to get started you're going to need to have Qt Creator installed already. And um, I have mine already installed but I'm going to just show you the command quickly. I'll also put this in the notes below of how to get it installed. So it's simply sudo apt install Qt Creator, and if you press enter, it will go ahead and install that for you. Mine's already installed, like I said, so I don't need to install it. If you have it installed, you should see it when you uh, look in your menu, you should see a bunch of Qt related apps on your system, and this is the one that we're going to be using here, Qt Creator. So I'll go ahead and launch that. Now Qt Creator's got a lot of functionality, and I'm not going to try and cover all the things you can do in Qt Creator here. And um, what we're going to focus on is how to open our QGIS project, set up a Qt Creator project for it, and configure a few things so that we can get 3D support and multi-threaded compilation in a debug environment so that um, we can go and later edit the code, step through line by line, and um, make some changes to the code base. So to get started, I'm going to go to the File menu and say Open File. And I'm going to go and look in the development directory I created when I checked out QGIS um, in the previous episode and you want to look for this file called cmakelists.txt Alright, um, I didn't, I noticed this file is here, I don't actually want this to be here, it's from the previous build, so I'm just going to quickly jump off to my shell and remove that file because sometimes um, I found it causes some complications um, All right, so that file's out the way, and I'm going to choose the cmakelist.txt file. Right, so now what Qt has done is it's created something called a kit. A kit is like a build environment for your software. It describes which compilers to use and which um, paths to use and include directories and various other things. And by default, it creates a build target for your project. And I want to have a debug one as well, so I'm going to come and edit this one over here. And I want to change the path where it's going to build QGIS because I like to follow my own sort of naming conventions. So I'm going to create a directory here called QGIS debug build like this. All right. And so what I'm going to be doing is doing a debug build in this directory and a, a standard build without debugging symbols in this directory here. Alright, and then I can click on configure project and it's going to go and follow the same process that it did when uh, we did run the CMake command on the command line. It's in fact exactly the same logic that's running and it's going to scan to check that we've got all the needed dependencies to build QGIS on the system. Now on Ubuntu it um, doesn't correctly de detect one library that we need for Qt 3D support which is needed for QGIS 3D support. I want to build a 3D support, so I'm going to go to my projects here and just add some configuration options so that we can get 3D support built. So it's really uh, just three lines that need to be added. First of all, we need to add a, a flag or a parameter here for um, uh, called Qt3D Extras Dir, and that we need to set to the, the QGIS source code. A, a directory in this QGIS source code. Um, so I'm going to go over here and just put that in. Uh, let's see. So what this is is the path to the QGIS um, source code folder, and there's a directory in there called external, and it's got another directory in there called Qt3D extra headers. And those uh, 
there are actually headers and also a CMake file which helps to find the needed libraries for building this cute 3D stuff. Now there's one more thing we need to do to make that work is uh, to modify the kit. So I'm going to apply those changes. Uh, I think it didn't uh, properly press enter, so let me just go and do that again. It's going to give an error, but that's fine. Okay, I'll just add it again. I'll put these options in the notes underneath this video. Let's just see that it's got it. Okay, so you can see my new configuration option has been added here. Uh, I'm going to apply these changes and then I'm going to go and modify the kit which is being used for building so that it can also find the include directory in the library for this cute 3D extras library. So I'll just clear that away. To do that, I'm going to go over here to manage kits. Now you can see it created a kit called imported kit, which is the one that belong that was set up for this QGIS build that I'm doing. I'm going to give it a more intuitive name because um, in a few months' time I not, might not remember what that was for. I'll just call it QGIS build. Right. And then what I'm going to be doing is going down to the CMake configuration options here and I'm going to be adding in a couple of lines here. Now when you do this on your system it has to match the paths on your own system so um, even though I'm going to share these in the notes you need to adjust this to change uh, any specific paths here that are specific to your system. Right. So what this is doing is basically just adding a directory where you can find the headers for this cute 3D extra library and also telling you where the library itself is. Alright so now we've modified the kit and it's asking me do you want to keep this change, do you want to apply these changes or um, revert almost to the project changes. So I'm going to tell it to overwrite the changes in CMake cache. And then um, there is one last thing I want to do which is when, when we build I want to build in multi-threaded mode. I showed you last time I've got eight cores in my system so I want to add an, an argument here to say build with eight threads. That will just you know significantly speed up the build time. All right, and now you're ready to build. So I'm going to go and hit the build button over here, and then you can watch the output in your compile output window over here. All right, and I'm going to leave it to run. I'm going to cut away, and then I'll come back in a few minutes once it's built. Um, depending on your system. The build will uh, take anything from a few minutes to could be even a few hours on my older system it took multiple hours to build. Okay, so my build is completed and you can see in the build output compile output tab here you get a progress indicator just like you do in the console showing you that we've made it all the way to 100%. And now you can run QGIS from within the IDE simply by pressing on this green triangle, which will run QGIS. And um, we're still going to have a few issues because there are a couple of Python libraries that are not properly set up yet for um, some of the plugins that I'm running. But the application itself is all running fine. So I'm just going to ignore these two errors to start. And you can see my running QGIS. And if you look in the view menu, um, Oh, we should be seeing in a 3D window, so something's not quite right, and I think I know exactly what the problem is. So I'm going to just close here and um, go back to my projects here, and I think I forgot to enable 3D in these options here. So I'm just going to put type 3D here. You can see it's still set to false here. So I'm going to apply that change. We've got all the other configuration options we need for 3D support. I just forgot to tick that, so I'm going to go and um, uh, rebuild again. It's going to take a little while longer. I'll cut away while it builds and then uh, come back once it's done. 
Okay, good. Now the build is completed with 3D support. Um, so we're going to try to run it and see if it actually shows a 3D view menu in QGIS. Okay, and I'm just going to ignore these error messages. All right, so in the view menu there, we see now we've got the 3D map view and we can open a test project to see if it actually um, shows it in 3D. Okay, there we go, there's our 3D view all working nicely. So um, that's it for this um, session. Um, I'll be coming back with some more um, diving into how to get the development environment set so that you can make a pull request ready commit easily. So I'm going to look at how to get a style and um, coding conventions and other things that you need to make sure that your code um, is formatted in the right way and passes um, quality control when you send in your pull request. So that's it for this session. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.